The arrival of Farina has definitely caused a lot of discussions within the player base, and there's a few important things that need to be addressed in this video. So, after some time has passed since Farina's banner release, it seems like a lot of surprising things have been revealed, not just about her, but also provided a pretty unique insight about the community. I mean, to put it simply, the majority of Farina players can agree that she managed to elevate a lot of the less popular healers in the game, like Jean, Baiju, Mika, and so on. But at the same time, there's been this counter-argument floating around that you actually have to build these niche characters now, which means spending resources since Farina still drains a ton of team's HP, and it usually makes no sense to have a comp that doesn't have a healer, especially because the best way to earn her fanfare points is through healing. Now, here's the thing. There's about 14 healers in the game right now, and there's also Prototype Amber, which does provide pretty decent healing with some Catalyst users. So chances are, if you played the game for some time, you will have at least built one healer. But not all of these healers are equally good for Farina, that's for sure. And I'm not trying to rank them, that's an idea for a future video. But for example, we can definitely agree that some of the healers like Dory or Diona kinda suck with Farina. While characters like Benny or Cookie are somewhere in the middle, you need to do some workarounds. And then we have few of the preferred healers like Jean, Baiju, Kokomi, Yao Yao. And slightly less but still super relevant healers like Charlotte, Mika, Sayu, Barbara, Chi Chi, and Noel. And I know what you're thinking. The moment you heard top healers, you feel inclined that this is the only way to play Farina teams, only with the best ones. But the truth is, while Jean, for example, is super good, there are so many caveats when it comes to building teams. And as another example, you would rarely want to use Jean in Bloom comps, and instead many other healers could be utilized like Baiju, Kuki, Kokomi, and so on. And obviously, because there's a big variety of healers to choose from, you won't have all of them obtained or built. Like, Noel comps with Farina are pretty cool. Cool, but seriously, how many people actually bother to build this maid? Still, no matter how you look at it, Farina has basically increased the value of healers, especially some of the unpopular ones. Now, every healer can help boost the team's damage, and because Farina drains so much of the team's HP, the healing actually matters, because there are a lot of teams where you could ignore the healers, and just go with a shielder instead, or maybe even skip on a healer, especially if it's world exploration we're talking about. Anyway, that's just one of few unique things regarding Farina's situation. Next, I want to talk about her relevance compared to Xingqiu and Yelan. But first, thanks to Displate for sponsoring today's video. And if you remember, a few videos ago I've ordered some really cool Genshin Metal posters, and they came in this really satisfying plastic foil. In fact, there's a massive catalog of displays to choose from, ranging from anime to video games, and there's even a great variety of official Genshin artwork for you to order. What I love about Displate is that the setup takes like 20 seconds, and your boring walls transform into awesome art displays. Just apply the mounting system by following simple instructions, and you're good to go. Also, so Displate manufactures in Europe, so delivery is super fast, 4-5 to five days, and it's a great alternative compared to standard paper or canvas printing. But the best part? There's an insane Black Friday deal that's going on right now, but only for a limited time. And you can get up to 44% off by ordering 5 displays or more, but if you want to start slow, you can still either get 35% off with 1 or 2 displays, and 39% off with 3 or 4 displays. So make sure to use my link in the description, order some beautiful displays, and help support my channel. So, on a surface level, Farina kinda seems similar compared to Xingqiu or Yelan. All of them can apply Hydro off-field, so that means they are the same, right? And if they're the same, who's the best one? Well, the thing is, each one of them offers something unique. Xingqiu's Hydro Swords can reduce incoming damage, improves active characters' resistance to interruption, and he can even heal for a bit. Most importantly, at C6, he offers the best off-field Hydro application. On the other hand, Yelan offers strong support damage, her passive talent increasingly keeps boosting the active character's damage, and she also scales with HP. Finally, Farina also scales with HP. Her Hydra application is pretty decent, but unlike Xingqiu, she can help someone like Hu Tao vape all of her hits consistently. However, her biggest selling point is that she can boost the whole team's damage thanks to her burst, and because her skill can drain the team's health, the Hunter Artifact set becomes super relevant for a lot of damage dealers. But unlike Xingqiu or Yelan, Farina does need to have a healer in the team, which means she's a bit more limiting when it comes to utilizing her, since I already mentioned the importance of healers in the last part. I Ironically, while all of this makes her limiting, at the same time, you can create a ton of new team variations because of this. So where does that leave us? Well, honestly, this leaves us with a healthy meta, because Farina definitely hasn't made Xingqiu or Yelan irrelevant. They are still super strong, and in fact, they work amazing together in many team comps like Double Hydro or even Triple Hydro. 
Heck, the fact that the game has one more additional off-field Hydro Replicator is a win for everyone, since Hydro is in such a huge demand when it comes to building any kind of team. Overall, in terms of utilizing Xingqiu, Yelan, or Farina just by themselves, each one of them offers something unique, and this only means you can build a vast amount of different teams, including comps where you can utilize these characters together. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is this obsession I've noticed, where a lot of people are talking about C2 Farina. Some are calling it the most broken thing ever, and this made me curious. On my main account, I only pulled for C0 Farina, and my showcase and the team comps videos I've made are all based around C0 Farina. So I thought, what's the big deal about C2 Farina anyway? Well, I can tell you that people who own C2 Farina are living in a different world. Like seriously, I am shocked how much of a big boost she gains. And before I even talk about C2, there's the first constellation you also activate before it, which provides 150 fanfare points immediately when using the burst, and now the max fanfare you can obtain is 400 instead of 300. This means she essentially needs to only obtain 250 more, and then at talent level 10, her team's damage boost goes from 75% to 100%, which is pretty big. But then, we arrive at C2. Now, when she gains fanfare points from when the HP changes, that change is boosted by 250%. And if that's not enough, when she gains fanfare points above her limit, her own max HP increases. Both of these new bonuses are ridiculous. I mean, look, at C0, if I feed Charlotte some fruit here during Farina's burst, she recovers about 2% HP, so that means 2 fanfare points, right? Well now, if I feed her again, but with C2 Farina, she instead gains 8 fanfare points. Basically, each time HP changes, it is multiplied by 3.5 times, which is so ridiculous because this drastically reduces the need to use strong healers, because all of the changes to health get multiplied by crazy amount. And yes, you can actually gain fanfare points by just eating. I mean, you are changing the HP by doing this, right? Now, ironically, you still want to have strong healers, because as the second part of the constellation states it, once Farina starts gaining fanfare above the limit, her own max HP increases. Now, I haven't had the time to fiddle around much, but I've seen online people showing off their Farinas with 100,000 or more HP, which to me seems like such an insane concept. However, I still think at the end of the day, C2 does not make her viable. She's absolutely amazing at C0, but the second constellation does make her kind of bonkers. Although, I think this has been trending for a while now, because C2 Nahida is kinda insane, turning bloom reactions into critical hits on top of other bonuses, while C2 Nilo can shred Hydro and Dendro resistance by a massive amount. In my opinion, if you really enjoy using her, pulling for her second constellation is something you can work towards on future reruns. But this game is just not that challenging, and there's literally no need to get this ridiculous upgrade unless you want to see some funny numbers. Since keep in mind, she scales with max HP, so imagine her damage when she has 80,000 or 100,000 health. Funny. Look, Genshin is kinda daunting with the amount of content it can offer to a new player. And you might have heard this statement that Farina is not beginner friendly, since she's from Fontaine, and that means it could take a long time to raise her for somebody who's just a newbie in the game. Well, it just so happens I have a free-to-play account that I barely log into, but I am currently somewhere in the middle of Liyue's Archon Quest, so I'm still nowhere close to Fontaine's Ark, right? Well, even if I don't have Farina on this account, I decided to take a little trip to Fontaine. There's actually a teleport point you can go to even with a low adventure rank account. So naturally, once in Fontaine, I was able to just run around and collect Lake Light Lilies and even fight the world boss for the Ascension materials. And as for the weekly boss, you can just challenge it now without needing to complete its corresponding Archon quest. So yeah, at low adventure rank, you can still level up Farina no problem, you just need to take a detour. But then, if you're a beginner player, what about the need to have a healer? Well, the thing is, I am an old, old veteran player. But one thing I immediately noticed on this free-to-play account was that my team's damage sucks and fights take longer. So that means I am bound to make more mistakes and more mistakes leads to taking more damage from enemies. And so then I need a healer, which means I will need to build at least one healer. But is Farina's damage increase that good for a low-level account? Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know. I don't want to make false promises to newbie players. There's like a ton of high value characters that are worth building when starting out in Genshin, like Xingqiu, Benny, Sucrose, Fischl, and so on. It just really depends on your account and what 5 stars you actually got. 
But at the end of the day, Farina offers a lot of new team comps with the healers you build. So that's something to keep in mind. Anyway, these were the things I wanted to talk about Farina. Hope you enjoyed this video and I would really appreciate it if you could press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.